Hey designers, tell me if this sounds like you. When you dreamt of ditching your day job and becoming your own boss, were you picturing just how amazing your newfound freedom would be? No more being told what to do and when to do it or letting someone else be the master of your schedule. But now you've been at this web design business thing for a few months, you feel like your business is starting to take over your life. And no matter how many all-nighters you pull, you just can't seem to get ahead of it all. I have totally been there, which is why in this video, I wanna share with you five simple steps which I took to drastically improve my productivity and feel like I was actually getting somewhere each time I sat down to work. But before we jump into today's productivity hacks, if you are currently winging it with each new web design project that you book and you're ready to finally look and feel the part of a pro designer, then it's time you came up with your very own custom client process. If you could use a little hand-holding with designing that and want to peek behind the scenes, the exact process which I followed when working with my own clients, then my free client process template was created just for you. You can find the link to the template right up here, and I'll also stick that for you in the description below if you want to grab it later. Okay, productivity hack number one for website designers. Put your phone somewhere that you can't see it. So they say the best way to avoid temptation to text and drive is to put your phone somewhere in your car that is well of reach. Well, the same thing goes for trying to drive distracted in your business. You may not be putting actual lives in danger when you pick up your phone for the 37th time that day, but there is one thing you are killing and that is your productivity. How many times have you been trying to get in some solid work, but then your phone lights up with an email notification and you think, oh, it could be a client, I'll just check it real quick. But after responding to that email, you notice you have another notification over here and then on this other app. And pretty soon you've wasted an entire hour of your day watching strangers bust move on TikTok. Even if you don't fall into the trap of picking up your phone every time it lights up with a new notification, even the simple act of glancing at it could be totally derailing your focus from your current work. Now, obviously, if you are a parent or primary caretaker of someone, you may not have the luxury of not answering your phone when it rings, but I want you to think back on your last week of business or even just your personal life in general. How many of the notifications that popped up were actually an emergency? Probably not many, right? So if you can, try leaving your phone in another room altogether. If you can't, pause this video right now and take 10 minutes to dig into your settings and silence the notification settings for apps that aren't serving you or your business. And if it's truly important, schedule a task to check that app for missed notifications later. You will be amazed at how much of your to-do list you can check off when you aren't constantly shifting your focus in and out of work mode. So that is productivity hack number one. Hack number two is try deleting Instagram from your phone. So this hack is really just another way to take the first step even further and remove opportunities for distraction altogether. Think of the apps you currently have on your phone and be super honest with yourself about which ones you can't be trusted not to get sucked in by. For me, that's Instagram. If you follow me on the gram, you'll know I'm not an avid poster, but I can spend hours scrolling through the lives of other people. I might tell myself I'm on there to find inspiration or to keep myself up to date on current industry trends, but unless I've actually scheduled a time block to sit down and use Instagram for that specific purpose, then chances are I'm actually just procrastinating and allowing myself to become distracted from the real income earning activities in my business. So I made the decision to delete Instagram from my phone altogether. For some of you, Instagram is actually a big part of your marketing strategy and you can't exactly afford to be without it. If that's you, then there are a few ways to get around actually having it on your phone. So if responding to DMs or comments is how you tend to engage with your audience, then try setting yourself a task to check them at a set time each day by logging into Facebook on desktop and using your Facebook business suite. Instagram is owned by Facebook. So if your business page and your business Instagram account are connected, all of your direct messages and your inbox and comments from both apps will be waiting for you in one easily accessible place. This way, you won't waste time trying to type out lengthy responses on your phone, and unlike on the mobile Instagram app, there's no risk of getting distracted by your feed or your story lineup. Now, what about when it comes time to actually post? How will you do that without the app? There are two ways to go about this. My favorite way is honestly to just use the desktop scheduling app, like Planoly, to schedule social media content in advance, since I'm more likely to be super strategic about which content I'm posting if I'm not always trying to just 
come up with something on the fly. Now, on the other hand, if you really do just wanna take a scheduled brain break and scroll through your favorite accounts, then it can be useful for, to visit the Chrome extension store and find an Instagram extension to add to your Chrome browser. Most are modeled after the mobile app, allowing you to post straight from your computer, respond to DMs and comments, and even scroll through your feed and watch stories. You are less likely to get sucked into your scroll if you are on your computer and actively checking off business tasks than if you're just casually sitting around on your couch on your phone. So that is hack number two. On to hack number three, which is to get out and treat yourself to a super cute alarm clock. Now, you could technically use your phone for this hack, but if you follow hack number one, then right now your phone is in another room. So instead, why not treat yourself to a cute little alarm clock to liven up the look of your workspace and to help you in keeping on task in your business? So every time you sit down to start a project, decide how long each step should reasonably take you and challenge yourself to complete that task within that amount of time. So say you're sitting down to design your client's homepage. You have already planned out which content will need to go on each section of the page and you determine that you need 10 sections total. Set a timer for each section and no matter where you are at the buzzer when it goes off, move on to the next section. If you're anything like me, you can spend hours and hours moving the same three bits of content around the page in an effort to get it just right. But when really it was fine the first time and I could have been working on the next section by now. So this is called pixel pushing and it's totally slowing down your client design process and costing you time that you could have been working on other income generating activities in your business. Now you can always go back and revisit something later if it needs more work, but you'll find you can actually accomplish so much more in a much shorter amount of time when you set a limit for how much time you'll allow yourself before calling something good and done. Now, with practice, you may even find you get faster and more confident in making decisions that would have taken you hours to come up with before. Alrighty, any guess what hack number four is? Yep, it's to use a project planning tool. Productivity suffers big time when we don't have a clear idea of what we should be working on that day. And it's not for a lack of hard work or long hours. How many times have you made it to the end of a grueling 14 hour day where you were chained to your laptop only to feel like you had nothing to show for it. Productivity isn't always about doing more, it's about doing less and still being able to get the same or better results. So rather than winging it every time you sit down to work and just accept that 14 hour days are the norm if you wanna get ahead in your new business, then try planning out each step of the project before you begin it. My favorite tool for project planning is Asana, which if you haven't heard of it or used it before, I created a video on how I use it right here, so you can check that out. So say for instance, you're onboarding a new web design client. Ideally, you have some sort of fixed process for doing this, where with each and every client, you check off the steps in the exact same way every single time. All it takes to get started with a new client is to duplicate your project in Asana, and then you're ready to start knocking out the steps on your to-do list. When you do this, you'll never have to wonder about what it is you should be working on each time you sit down at your computer and you're way less likely to allow yourself to get pulled in other directions by things that don't move the needle when you have your project planning tool open to hold you accountable for what needs to get done that day. If it's not important enough to schedule ahead of time in your project planning tool, then it's probably not the best use of your time in the first place. It also allows you to look back on your day and see all that you were able to accomplish keeping you motivated and moving forward with that project at a good clip. And finally, on to hack number five, batch working. So that project planning tool I just mentioned, my favorite way to use it is to set a plan to complete my work in batches. So batch working is probably the best thing that ever happened to my business, and here's why. When I first started designing websites for clients, I'd sit down at my computer at 9 a.m. on a Monday morning and look over all the things that I had to do that week. By 9.03, I'd be totally overwhelmed with no idea of where to start. I knew I better get busy, so I just started working my way down the list of tasks with no real strategy in mind. So at 10 a.m., I'd hop on that consult call that I scheduled, then from 10.30 to noon, I'd finish writing that blog post and try to come up with a clever Instagram caption for that day's post. I'd finally get around to working on my client's website by about 2 p.m., but then I remembered I had another consult call in 45 minutes, and I knew it wasn't possible for me to get much actual design work done in such a short period of time, and I just thought, why start something that I can't finish? So I just mindlessly scroll through Pinterest to kill time before my call. It's now 4 p.m., and I've managed to sit at my computer all day and have somehow yet to add even a single image or line of text to my client's website, which goes live in three days. 
Constantly hopping back and forth between tasks was getting me nowhere in my business real fast. But then I discovered batch working, which is basically just grouping similar tasks together so you aren't having to swap out which hat you're wearing as a business owner at any given moment. So you might save all of your admin tasks like managing your finances and tracking your success metrics for Mondays. Then Tuesdays, maybe you set aside as your call day since it can be hard to get any real work done when you're constantly having to hit pause in your work and hop on random calls throughout the week. Wednesdays might be your marketing day where you work on content creation or scheduling social media posts or newsletters. Then Thursday and Friday are for knocking out actual design work. Obviously, you have to set the batching schedule that works for you and what you're actually doing in your business, but grouping like tasks means that you will never waste time trying to get in the right mindset for working on a specific task. If it's a design day, you'll already be in the creative mode. If it's an admin day, you'll already be in business owner mode. No having to try to switch between the two. So instead of feeling constantly overwhelmed and like I could never make progress on any one area of my business, Batching my work allowed me to become super intentional about how I was spending my time. I felt so much more empowered when I sat down to work each day and was able to really get in the zone and knock out seemingly massive projects in a much, much shorter amount of time. So there you have it, five simple tips for how to be more productive as a website designer. So if you're looking for other ways to actually save time and totally streamline your web design process, then don't forget to get your hands on my free client process template for website designers, which I've linked for you in the description below. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you found this video helpful, like always, please do let me know by giving it a thumbs up and a like. And for the best tips on building a web design business that you love, don't forget to subscribe and tap on the little bell button so you'll be notified when new content drops on my channel every single week. And if you're looking for something to watch next, be sure to check out these videos too.